Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we've been talking about manifesting your light. And because the Lord told us that we are in the season of shining, it is important that your light shines this season. And that's what I've been talking to you all month. We've looked at different topics. We've looked at darkness versus light. Now we are talking about manifesting, which is very important. Manifesting your light. Now before we go into today's broadcast, I would like us to request for our daily bread. Are you ready? Join me right now. Release your faith and say, Father, I demand right now and I receive my daily bread it's coming to me now in jesus name amen praise god now if you've been following me on this message or this month talking about light you would have by now come to an understanding that the world is full of darkness the world is full of darkness now what does that mean you are not the cause of the darkness. God said, speaking to Isaiah, Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. But the darkness is not your problem. And that's another thing you need to understand. The darkness is not your problem. So make no excuse with the darkness. It is not your problem. Your problem is the absence of your light. Now, like I told you, you can't walk with another person's light. Walking in another person's light can only take you so far, but not that far. Walking with another person's life will not take you far. You will get to a spot where you will be limited. That's why sometimes you find people they go to church, they hear testimonies, they believe those testimonies, they want to walk in those testimonies, but things don't seem to work out the way they think. It is not because the testimonies are false, it is because the person who shares the testimony found their light. And their light is not your light, but what their testimony is saying is there is the availability of light. And that's what you should take out from every testimony. Such things are possible. But how I go about it is what makes the difference now. So if someone says, oh, I believe God to get out of debt. And God brought me out of debt. Now, it's important. That's why I always advocate that details be shared when we share testimonies now it is not a testimony if you cannot share the details I bought a car is not a testimony how I got the car is where the testimony lies I built a house is not a testimony unbelievers are building houses if you even check they will have more houses than believers the testimony is in how I built my house so standing up to say praise the Lord brethren God has done it. I didn't have a job, but yesterday, God gave me a job. Praise God. Now, people are only celebrating in your forward movement, so to speak, in life. They are not celebrating the testimony of God. The testimony is found in the details. So now, when we share those details, someone else will be able to see how you got light and how you carried out the light that came to you and produced the result. So take note, the details, it's very important. So now then, the world is full of darkness. And if you are going to make real progress in life, now what I'm sharing with you is so serious. I, you know, the more I fellowship with the Lord concerning this, the more I, I feel the intensity, I, I feel the passion by which we must tell this truth. 
listening to me, if you don't receive light concerning any situation and you find an easy way out of that situation, that darkness is still there. And because that darkness is still there, it's going to still affect you or it will affect your children. Listen, if you've got to solve poverty in not just your life, but in your generation, you've got to receive light from God. Now, it is that light when you receive that you can give to your children's children. Now, that's what the Bible meant when it says a good man a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. A good man here is talking about a man who walks with God. If you don't walk with God, you are not a good man. So he says he leaves an inheritance for his children's children. What inheritance is he talking about? He's not talking about houses and lands and, and, and fat bank accounts. No, he's talking about light. A good man receives light from God. And that light he has received is what he gives to his children's children. Hear me? I say this with all boldness and all sincerity in my heart my children will never be broke it will be impossible for them to be broke if they ever get broke it will be because they deliberately chose to be broke you know why because the lord gave me light concerning this and i have already begun to teach it to my children no matter how young they are now, what does that mean when it comes to finances, when it comes to God meeting their needs? Now, already, before their eyes, they are seeing this manifestation in our lives, their parents. Now, whenever God does anything, we let them know. When we believe God for anything, we let them know what we're believing God for. And when God does it, we let them see and know the details so in their mind now they function with that in their mind already that it is god that provides for us it, it's it's it, it's something in them so even when we interact with them and they are saying we need to get something i know as parents you're trying to say no you know you you've got to watch that they, they are quick to say but dad why don't we ask god for it i, I mean it's there already so they know that already but then beyond that, I'm deliberately teaching them the light that the Lord taught me. And letting them know that these things are from the Lord. And if you practice these things, you will always have your needs met. You see that now? Now, what, what am I doing? I'm leaving an inheritance for them. And I'm trusting God that the same inheritance will be passed down to their own children. Because we'll see that. And, and it's going... Now, now, that's how we grow. So, none in our lineage will ever be broke. Why? Because we don't partake of the darkness that is in the world. Even though there is darkness in the world, we don't partake of that darkness. Now, you see... In different areas of your life, your health, your finances, everything that has to do with you, you must patiently receive light from God. But sometimes people lead their lives not knowing why things are happening the way they are happening to them. And I'll tell you this truth. A prophet will not help you so much in this regard. A prophet will help, but not so much. In this regard, I'm telling you the truth. Why? Because you see, I'll give you a story in scriptures. Second Samuel chapter 21. Now, the Bible says, Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years. Year after year. Do you understand what that means? For three straight years, there was famine in the land. 
And this thing continued now, say, three years. Three years in a row. And David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is because of Saul and his bloodthirsty house, because he killed the Gibeonites. Wow. So there was famine in the land, and they didn't know what was causing it. I'm sure they must have tried everything they know to do agriculturally. They must have tried everything, you know, let's, let's, let's use this method of farming. Let's apply this method. Let's get water over here. For men, every year, their, their crops don't just do well. So there was economic crisis in the land. And so David, after three years, it took David three years. I don't think I'll wait that long. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, <laughs> it took David three years. Now, I see, that's why these things are written for our learning. So you don't have to wait for so long. The moment you see things are not working the way it's supposed to work, now you've done what you know to do for it to work and it's not working. Don't wait that long. Run to the Lord. For what? For light. So David went to the Lord and the Lord says, hey, it's now there is no way you are going to connect the famine in the land to what Saul did many years ago. Think about that. But when David went to the Lord and said, Lord, what's going on? Now, the challenge most times is we don't even go to the Lord to say, what's going on? We go to the Lord and say, Father, let there be abundance this year. Oh God, let there be abundance this year. We receive abundance. We receive abundance. Now, sometimes it's important you pause. And there's supposed to be abundance normally. There's supposed to be goodness normally. When it's not happening, don't just think praying and bombarding heaven will solve the problem. First, inquire of the Lord what. Now, that's why I always say this. The, when you, every time you want to pray, the first thought in your mind before, when you approach God should be, Lord, how do I pray about this situation? And that's inquiring of the Lord. So, here, David inquired of the Lord and God told him where the problem is. Now, there is no amount of prayer, no amount of work David was going to do that would take out that farmer until he obeyed the instruction the Lord gave to him. And that's what took care of the situation. Imagine if this light was not revealed to David. He would have led his nation into real poverty as a king. And that's not what you want. Now, the Bible didn't say the prophet came to him. David himself, though he was the king, he inquired of the Lord. And that's why I told you these things work better when you receive the light personally. Why? Because then you can rise in faith and the conviction of your heart to do what you are commanded to do. But when another person tells you what to do, sometimes you do those things even with a doubtful heart. It's just that I have to, if I don't do it now, it will now be as though, let me just do it. Now, so there are cases where it will work that way. It will work, I mean, you will get results. But there are times where your doubt, your doubting can affect you. But why do you doubt? Because you see, you didn't receive that word clearly in your own spirit. There is something about receiving light from the Lord. I mean, there is something it does to you. It's not just the hearing. It's, it's the propelling from your inside just like ezekiel said the lord said to me stand up on your feet and then he now said and the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet see that's how god works as i jesus said in john 15 ye are clean to the words that i have spoken unto you the amplified version says the the teachings that i discuss with you it prunes you it prunes you so if you don't hear those teachings yourself from him, you are not being pruned. There is something about his, 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 his word coming into your own spirit. That's the light we're talking about. And guess what? John said in 1 John 1, he says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship. Now listen. From today, make up your mind. You are not going to blame anybody, any devil, anything for any failure in your life. Make up your mind for that. No one is responsible for your failure. No one will ever be responsible for your failure, no matter all the blames that you want to apportion. 
nobody take responsibility for your life you failed because you did not have the required light in that situation and you know the truth about it no one stopped you from receiving that light from god you were just not available to receive it you weren't so i bring the word of god to you today calm down and receive light from the lord it is only when you receive light from him how do i receive the light just like david the inquire of the lord lord what do you think about this lord how do i go about this lord what do you think now if, if it's sickness in your body the same thing the same thing before you start running to the doctor i hear me take out time to inquire of the lord lord i don't know why i feel the way i feel what's going on in my body i want to be healed What's going on in my body? I'm not supposed to be sick. Lord, you said you would take no, you, you would let none of those diseases come upon me. You said it. So now, 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 you see, instead of you getting as I rebuke the sickness, I declare none of these diseases will come upon me. It looks wonderful. But you see, if you notice that that thing is going beyond normal, when, what do I mean by that? You are not supposed to be sick in the first place. The moment you find out that this thing is, is, is I mean, maybe you, have, you, you thought it was a slight headache. And then it begins to move on. It's not going first day, second day. Ah, what's going on? Pause. Before you rush to the doctor, pause and say, Lord, I know I'm not supposed to be sick. I know. What's going on in my body? Now, just a question like that can expose you to light. Now I'm telling the truth, there are times the Lord will tell you, go see a doctor. And guess what? When he tells you, go see a doctor, it's not any doctor that you can see. You've got to trust him to lead. Now the moment he say, go see a doctor, it means that there is a light that a doctor will help you understand. Because some, that's the truth. sometimes the Lord wants to communicate something to you and you won't even get it. That's why constant fellowship with the Lord is important. So you will understand his language. Now, the fact that the Lord says, go see a doctor, doesn't mean your healing is going to be from the doctor. When you go to the doctor, listen to what he has to say, listen to his recommendations, but then take them before any action. Go back to the Lord, say, Lord, I, this is how far I've gone. Bring back a report to the Lord. Show that you are depending on the Lord. I'm telling you the truth, this is going to open you up to light, not just for yourself, for generations after receive light for your family receive light for your world receive light for your generation i i pray today that enough light will be given to you to last beyond you i, I pray that the light of god from you will form systems that will affect positively men in the name of the lord jesus christ my time is up but I will not stop without inviting you this evening to our program at 6 p.m. tagged Spirit of Prophecy. Oh, you, you need to be here. You need to be with us this evening. There's going to be an abundant supply of God's Spirit over us. You don't want to miss it for anything. The sick will be healed, I know that. Burdens will be taken away from people. Now you can either join us physically or join us online. The information is on the screen, but don't miss it by 6 p.m. today for any reason. I'll be looking out for you. God bless you. Bye-bye.